So this piece up here is going to be your congruent statement. And it says that's going to be triangle. LMC is congruent to triangle BJK. When we're doing our proofs, we're always going to be proving that two triangles are congruent. In section one, we start out by saying, well, we got to figure out, okay, every single side is congruent to every other side. Every single angle is congruent. That's really not the case. And in section two, we'll see here in just a second, you really only need to know three different parts. If three different parts are congruent, then you can prove the two triangles are congruent. So using that congruent statement, we can start to make some congruence pairs down below in section one there. So we got LMC is congruent to BJK. So that just tells us that everything, like MC right here and JK are congruent. JB, ML are congruent. LC, BK are congruent. And then also each of those angles. So all these angles are going to be congruent between the two triangles. So that congruent statement tells us all that information. So these are some of the markings that you'll start to see on sides. If two sides have the exact same amount of tick marks, they're congruent. If two angles have the exact same amount of arcs, they are going to be listed as congruent as well. So if you see those markings, that's going to tell you that those parts are congruent. If you get a statement, you can mark it on your sheet of paper so that you kind of keep track of, okay, I know this angle and this angle are the same, this side and this side are the same as you start to organize your curves. So here's our statement. We can also use kind of a visual here as we start to match up these sides. So here we first have LC is congruent to blank. So I'm going to go over and find LC. LC represents this side right here, and I'm going from L over to C here. When I'm going to match up the side on this side, I can kind of see it's this B and K down here. But since I started with the statement over here as L, C, I'm listening at this direction, L to C. I've got to do the same thing on this triangle, B to K. So B, K is the only answer here that is correct. If you put K, B, that would be incorrect. So B is the side that matches up with L, or start the angle. C is the angle that matches up with K. So we got to go in the same order for those. So same with J, B. If you look at J, B, we're looking at the top of the hill, J down to B. And then I got to make M, L my other statement. Now, using the figures is nice, but really, you don't even need these figures. All you need is this congruent statement. Look at L, C. L is on the outside. C is on the outside. So it's the first and last of, of this statement. B, K, look at that. B is the first. K is the last. So the two letters, L, C, are going to match up to the two letters on the other part of your congruent statement. How about JB? Here it is, JB, ML. So there's going to be your congruent statement. Now you go to K, you look at the congruent statement. Where does K match up with? So K is the last letter. Where does K match up with on the first? C. How about angle M? Angle M is the middle. What does that match up with? J. Now we're looking back at triangles. C, M, L. So I'm going from C to M to L. What does that match up to? K, J, B. So that's going to be K, J, B. J, K, B, I look at that. That's J to K to B. So I'm going middle, last, first, M, C, L would be my real statement. So we just need to look at that statement, and then we can start to match up where each letter is located, and then we can start to make those conclusions. So in that little section there, we had angle K is congruent to C, M is congruent to J, and then your two triangle statements using those, those statements. So really, we don't even need those figures. You can just look at this congruent statement, and we can answer all six of those questions.